Well, good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Good. So good to see you. So good to worship together. Doesn't, ah, isn't that amazing? To come into God's presence and worship Him. Hmm? Yeah, hey, how about we pray and then get into the Word this morning? Yeah, God, yeah, we just thank you so much for, for, for this day and everything that you've um, blessed us with. And God, just, just this, this opportunity to come here and worship you. And God, I, I truly believe that, uh, yeah, you, you have something for us this morning. And, and God, that is, is something that's got to happen through you and your spirit. So may, may you just work uh, in me, work through me, and, and work beyond me. Uh, would you just speak into our hearts? God, you're, you're so big. You're so amazing. You, you have a personal message for us this morning. You want to you wanna make uh, the, the verses and, and the truth that gets said come alive in our hearts. So we just pray that we'd give you the freedom to do that. We would just submit to what you're wanting to tell us this morning. And we just want to say we love you. We, we bless you and we honor you. Amen. Right on. So uh, this morning, I'm going to be wrapping up the, the Freedom Series as uh, re- we remember those who fought for our freedom. Uh, can you shout freedom? Freedom! freedom! <laughs> Doing that all morning and then in the foyer, people are like, freedom, freedom! It's good. Your voices will be hoarse by the end of uh, my sermon. Great. So I, I, as I was preparing for this message, uh, Galatians 5 verse 1 stood out to me. And then kind of all of Galatians 5 stood out to me. And I was like, man, there's so much good stuff, nutrients about freedom and how we are called to live in it. And so we're going we're gonna to kind of just go through Galatians 5 this, this morning and, and break down how, how, how Paul is talking about uh, that we can live in our freedom. So if you want to turn there in your Bibles, if you have those, or even your iPhones, it's going to show on the screen as well. Uh, but that might help you uh, just follow along uh, with the chapter as well. So Galatians 5 verse 1, it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Woo! Freedom! (laughs) Yeah. This is why Jesus came, right? He came to set us free for freedom so that we can enjoy our freedom. Uh, He's he's an amazing God. He didn't leave us in in slavery to sin. Uh, He he came that we might experience these, these free lives and live lives of freedom. And so then it says, stand firm then, don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And so this is where we've been given this freedom, but we still have this calling to steward the freedom that God's given us, right? And, and it's, this, uh, it's, it's kind of the said, hey, Christ set you free for freedom, so now our responsibility is to stand firm and not be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Paul goes on to say, mark my words, I, Paul, tell you, that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare every man who lets himself be circumcised that he's obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. So some of you maybe men who are circumcised in here today are very afraid right now. <laughs> like, oh man, I'm, that's it for me? You know, like, I'm doomed? Um, and, and this is not what Paul is, is getting at. He's taking this example because what was happening uh, in the church um, in Galatia was Jews were, were, were coming in. There, there were people that had given their lives to the gospel and accepted Jesus. And now Jews were saying, oh, that's good and good, but we got to be circumcised. And they were like, whoa, I, I didn't know that. Ah, I, yeah. And Paul's saying, N- no, don't, don't. I- anything that we do to externally try to work our way into God's blessings, to try to earn our salvation, it's essentially putting us back under the law, and this is where we've, been, we've fallen away from grace. And, and you put yourselves under the law, where you're carrying the law, where you're trying to work your way into God's favor, into God's salvation. And this is what Paul is so adamant a- about combating. And that's because it's, it's through Jesus Christ that we're made right with him, right? It's, it's through Jesus Christ and by faith that, we, that we've accepted. And, and, and now we live in this place of, of freedom and right standing with God through Christ, not through external works. And so verse 5 says, for through the Spirit, this is how we live now, right? This is where, uh, as Christians, we get our power. F- through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. 
And, and so God has put us into this place of right standing with him. He's brought us from slavery to sin, and he's put us in this place uh, of, of right standing. But at the same time, we are, we are waiting to that one day that we, we meet before him, and that righteousness kind of comes to fruition as we get glorified bodies uh, in heaven. And so it says in Hebrews, it's a little confusing, it says in Hebrews uh, 10, he's, he's made us perfect, those who he's making holy. So that's a little bit confusing. Wait, are we perfect or are we being made holy? And again, in, in position, in our, in our walk with God, we have right standing with him, but we're working this out into our lives, right? The process of sanctification where God is working in our minds. And, and, and um, like Claude was talking about last week, we are these, this new creation in Christ. We, we were, we're this caterpillar. Uh, we got turned into a butterfly. And now we're kind of trying to learn to flap our wings, right? It's just kind of like, whoa, look at this. Um, but we don't know how to yet. And this is where God is, uh, God is, we will be made righteous and that will come to fruition. But right now it's the process of sanctification that he's growing in us. So Romans 5, 17 is an amazing, exciting verse. It says, for, for if because of one man's trespass, death reigns through that one man, much more those who receive the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will reign through the one man, Jesus Christ. And so this is where in our lives now, um, we can receive grace from God. We can, we can receive this free gift of righteousness. We give our lives to him. He puts us in, in a right standing with, with, with God and we receive these gifts and then we reign. And that's what we have to do. If someone gives you a free gift, you have to receive the gift, Right? And then you have to use the gift. And, and that's really important because sometimes we try to work for God's grace. And we try to work for God's righteousness, but then it's not a free gift. Right? No one gives you a gift and it's like, okay, I'm going to work for this. I'm going to, I'll work for this and then I'll use it. It's like, wait, I just, I gave you a, a gift. It's a gift. And so this is the, the gift that we have. We have this grace, an abundance of grace in our life, free gift of righteousness. And when, when we... When we receive that, we reign in life through Jesus. And so it says in, in verse 6, For Christ, for in Christ Jesus, when we're in this place, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. So again, Paul's not contradicting himself. He's just saying that the Christian life isn't about an external point system, right? It's, it's not about, I go to church, I do this, I do this, I do this, and I get enough points, and now God loves me, and now I'm, I'm good, and now I'm saved. It, it's not about these things that, that save us. That, that makes, throws us back under the law. It's, what is it about? The only thing that counts is faith in God expressing itself through love. Faith in God working um, in and through our lives and coming out of our lives um, through love. And so Paul continues, and, and he says, You were running a good race. So the, the Galatian people were, were, were accepting uh, this, this gospel and this free gift. And then it says, but who cut in on you or pushed you off course, that means, to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from one who calls you. A little yeast works through a whole batch of dough. Paul's saying, hey, if, if, if you're going to put yourselves back under the law, even if, if one act of circumcision, that's going to work its way into your entire life, where again, your relationship with God will be based on what you do and not who God is anymore. I'm confident in the Lord that we will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever it may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I'm still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cr cross has been abolished. And this is where Paul gets savage. He's mad. As those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. So Paul is really passionate about this. He, he, is, he is really ripped off. And he's like, those preaching circumcision, just cut it all off. Because... Because this is where, and, and he even starts writing in, in chapter 6. It's pretty wild, eh? He's writing in chapter 6, and he's saying, like, look at the big letters I write with my own hand. He, 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 his scribe stops writing for him, and he starts writing because he's passionate that they get this. Because this is the foundation of our Christian walk. That we, we, it, It's not about our actions that make us right with God. It, it's about this free gift of righteousness that God has given us. And we don't want to put ourselves under the law. So how do we apply this to our lives today? Um, because for us, we, 
we're probably not, you didn't wake up this morning and kind of look at your shirt and be like, is it a polyester cotton blend? Because then I can't wear that because I'm not under the law. That's probably not us today, right? But in the same way, I really think sometimes we do fall into that mentality of having a point system to earn God's favor. And I've done that in my own life. As you know, you're, you're stuck in, in this place of addiction, right? And you're stuck in this place of, of sin. And you say to yourself, I'm going to work my way back to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be free and I'm going to live free. And now, oh God, now you can love me. Now I'm good enough for your grace and your love. But, but then again, we, we make mistakes and we fall out of this, this place because we mess up. And, and we try to work our way again back to God. But this is where it's so important that we receive God's grace in our life. Uh, I, again, if, if God, if I gave you mittens at winter time, and you said, thank you for these mittens, I'm going to use them when my hands are warm. I'd be like, that's not what mittens are for. <laughs> mittens are for to make your hands warm, Right? And again, this is where God's grace, it works the same way. We need God's grace and God's favor and and his spirit to live for him. And sometimes we we try to be good enough to earn that, but but, 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 but then we're putting ourselves in a place where we're really just trying to, again, follow a bunch of rules and be good enough for God instead of accepting his grace and letting his grace transform our lives and work through our lives through faith and that expresses itself through love. And this is, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where that freedom is experienced because we freely receive God's grace in our life and that, then that works through us and, and in us, right? And even sometimes we, with good things, we, we have to be careful with, with things like devotions. Because it, when we don't do our devotions, all of a sudden our prayer lives, they, they fall apart. And I think there's probably two reasons for this. The first reason is legitimate. Because devotions, they help you get connected with God. You wake up, you read your devotions, you have this time of prayer and connection that sets you up throughout the day to meet with God. And then the second reason I think our, our prayer life really suffers, our relationship suffers, is we don't do devotions and then we fall into this place of, oh no. I didn't do my devotions. I can't really pray to God today. He's not really wanting to hear my prayers. I would go to him, but he's, ah, uh, what is he going to say? Okay, I'll do them tomorrow, and then the day after, and then I'm, we're good with God again. Now I can, now I can receive his grace and, and his blessings in my life. No, that's not how it works. God, God's grace wants to meet us wherever we're at so, so he can take us and transform us and help us. Again, it's mittens that keeps our hands warm. It's God's grace that helps us connect with God. I, I need his grace and, and his love even to help me to have the desire to meet with him. And so this is where, again, Paul's saying this, this is not about you working yourselves towards being good enough for God. This is about you being free to accept God's spirit and his grace in your life, to work from that and not for that. And that's so important. So this is where uh, Paul continues in verse 13, and he kind of shifts gears. And he says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom as an opportunity to indulge in the flesh. The message says it's absolutely clear that God's called you to a free life. Just make sure you don't use your freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. So the first thing that we don't want to do is lose our freedom and put ourselves under the law where we have to be good enough to, to, to obtain a, a place of right standing with God. That's only through faith. But the second thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to just be like, Christ set me free. I'm, I'm free to just do anything. Go anywhere. All right. You know, I can, I can get jiggy on the weekend, come to church. God's grace will meet me and I'm free. And this is where Romans 6 says, how can you who've died to sin live in it? Man, you're a new creation in Christ. He set you free from sin so you can live free from sin. And again, through the power of God, but, but this is where we have that responsibility. You know, Christ has set us free, and so we, we want to live free. You know, if, I, if you did a, a crime and, and you were in jail, and I, bail, I bailed you out of jail, and, and then you, you went back to your house, and two weeks later I checked up on you, 
and I opened the door and just try to see how you're doing now that you're free from jail. And I realized that you, you turned your decor into a, the jail cell that you were in. I was like, oh, okay, that's a little weird. And you're wearing these pinstripe pajamas. You're eating jail food. And I was like, what is going on? Dude, are you okay? Yeah, I'm free. It's awesome. I love it. I'm enjoying my free life. Doesn't look like it. I guess technically you're free, but, you, but, you, but, but you, you don't look like you're living free. And again, this is where God doesn't want us. He set us free from sin so that we can live for him. He, he has a path and a purpose for our freedom. And, and this is where this is so important. And, God, and Paul goes on to talk about what does this path and purpose for our freedom really look like? What's the, what is it all? What's our expectation for, for God now that we've been given this freedom? And so we'll pick it up in, in verse, the end of verse four, 13. He says, rather serve, and that, that word can even mean, uh, it kind of means doulos, like be a bond servant to one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. And 1 Peter 2, uh, 16 to 17 is so close to this, so I want to read this as well. It says, live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God and honor the emperor. And this is where, again, God has set us free, but he's also, he, he has this, this path and purpose to our freedom. This last week, um, I went to, I, I was going to Walmart and uh, my dog, Rome, was with me, chilling. We were rolling together. Um, I was going to bring him to daycare. I'm a little embarrassed saying that, okay? But I don't have a kid, so I bring my dog to daycare, all right? He's my boy. No, he's not my son or anything, okay? My grandparents especially let me know that. That is not our grand doggy, <laughs> okay? Give us grandchildren. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I'm in Walmart. I open the door. And, and he immediately just whoo, jumps right out before I even think about anything. And he is, he is so pumped. Freedom! woo He's running around, meeting new people. Hey, hi, hi. And everyone's so like, oh, it's a puppy, aren't you so cute? And I'm like, Row, get back here, come on. Freaking out a little bit too much, but he's in, again, he's in danger. And, and, and again, this is not the freedom that God has called us to. He's not just called us to be a, a puppy in a parking lot. Freedom, Christ, I'd be free. I'm not under the law. Woo! I'm going to and fro. Um, there, there was another time where, where we took Rome on a, on a hike, and we were, we were walking down this path. That's what you do on hikes, walk down a path. And, um, and so we were, we were kind of like, hey, let's let, let's let him go. Let's see what happens. And it was... It was probably a little bit dumb, because we didn't know, like, are we going to see this dog again? But we can get another one, so. <laughs> so we let him go, and he takes off. He's like, okay, but then he comes running back. And sometimes he runs ahead, and he's looking behind to make sure that we're there. And, and he's staying on the path, and he's running back and forth. And at one point, he runs ahead, and he meets, like, a, a group of ladies. They're like, oh, a puppy! And then he just jumps right into the bush, <laughs> gets all scared. But again, this is kind of the, the, the path that God has. This is the plan that God has for our freedom. We're free. Rome was free to go wherever he wanted to go. He could have just ran right into the lake. He could have ran. He could have gone anywhere. But that wasn't the plan. It, it was to follow the path that, that was laid out for him and to make sure that, that you know, his masters were, were okay with where he's going. And again, this is the freedom that God has for us. And actually... I don't, you probably realized it already, the path of freedom God has for you is to become a slave to God and other people. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It's for freedom. Christ sets you free. Now be a slave to me and others. God, that doesn't sound like freedom. <laughs> like I thought freedom was, it, it sounded cooler when we were shouting it, and now it's like being a slave to you and other people. But the most beautiful thing is Romans 6, 2 says you're a slave to whatever you obey, right? So you can be a slave to sin or you can be a, a slave to God, which leads to righteous living. And the beautiful thing is we were never meant to live and serve ourselves, right? I, I, I think, oh man, true experience and freedom happens when we're free from the world revolving around us. 
and us just almost using God as a way to meet our needs and using God as comfort, yet we're just kind of serving ourselves. And, and no, true freedom comes when we're free from ourselves. It comes at that point of surrender where we say, God, I don't want to live for me. In view of God's mercies and everything you've done for me, I'm going to offer myself as a living sacrifice. I'm, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow the path that you have for me. I'm going to serve other people in my life. And this is, this is God's plan and purpose and direction for the freedom that he's giving you. You guys good? Awesome. Let's, let's continue in this, this chapter here. So verse 16 says, so I say, walk by the Spirit. Right, this is how we're called to do this. It's not in our own works. It's through the Spirit, walking by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what's contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what's contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So we still have this war inside of us, right? Because we have this flesh that, that's just saying, I want to do this, and I want to go here, and I want to do that. But we have the Spirit as well wanting to lead us. And so the key is not just to try to fight with our flesh. The key is to walk by the power of the Spirit in our lives. And this is where it says, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Again, you're, you're in this place of grace, acceptance in God's sight. And he's giving you the power to, to live. He's giving you the power to not gratify those desires of the flesh. He's giving you the power to live for him. But it's all through the Spirit, right? And so Paul says in Acts 19, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, jealousy, uh, discord, fits of rage, selfish ambition, distensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live in this way will not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul, he's spelling out, uh, again, th these are fleshly acts. And we have to make sure too, as we're led by the Spirit, um, sin is defined by the word of God, right? Some people take that love God and love your neighbor and they're just like, just love man, just love. But, but the Bible tells us what love is. Right? And the Bible shows us what is pleasing to him and what isn't pleasing to him. And this is where um, you almost have this temptation of, of because, oh, it's just love that we define love. And then we say how that looks and I become the center of my moral universe. But again, the, the, this is where Paul is lining this out. Hey, these are acts of the flesh. If you do this, you're following the flesh. It's not how we're called to live at all. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there's no law. And so when we, when, when we are walking with the Spirit, that there's this fruit that's happening. There's this love and joy and peace and patience. And, and when we're in that place, we're, 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 we're just caught up with the path that God has put us on. And, and in this, we're, we're fulfilling the law through Right? Jesus inside of us. Him leading us. Him giving the power to do these things in our life so that we can bear fruit. And this is, this is the purpose for our freedom. As we, as I say we wrap up, it's probably going to be a lot longer. You know, don't listen to me. But as, as we conclude here, this is really the purpose and key that, 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 that God has for our freedom. It says in Romans 7, 4, So my brothers and sisters, you who died to the law through Christ, that you might belong to him. Oh, isn't that beautiful? We're not under the law. It says in, in Romans, we were married to the law. That wife died, and now we're married to Christ. To him who raised, was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God. This is what God wants to see in your life. You bearing fruit. You're in the fruit business. Tell your neighbor that. I'm in the fruit business. I work for Dole. No, you don't work for Dole, but, but you work for God and you are in the, the fruit business, the, the business of bearing fruit. And this is where, th this is so key, right? Because as, as, as the fruit of the Spirit is, is flowing through our lives, people will taste the fruit. And it won't taste like a superstore fruit that's shipped in. It's going to taste like, whoa, this is organic. This is, this is something, this is, this is, you know, this is heavenly. 
And they're going to see God through our lives as the fruit of the Spirit works through our lives because he's, he, he's transforming us. He's transforming our minds and it's working out in, into our actions. And this is, this is the purpose and plan for our freedom. So how can we do that? How can we see and live fruitful lives? Oh, it's a beautiful invitation. It says in John 15 verse 5, it says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. This is Jesus talking. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Isn't that wild? If you remain in me, you'll bear much fruit. And, and so the, the harvest is going to be good if we remain in God. Over here, you know, we don't always have a, a, a great harvest. Not everything always goes to plan, right? I saw a post this weekend that there was still a farmer trying to get stuff out of the fields. It's because the weather doesn't always cooperate. But, but, but there will, there will be a harvest of fruit when we remain in him. There will be, we will be able to bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. So this is where remaining is so important. Staying connected to the Spirit is so important because for a lot of my life, I, I knew that God wanted me to bear fruit, and I saw the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm like, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, okay, gotta do this, gotta, gotta try to bear fruit for God. But, but God's really saying, no, I'm the vine. You're the branch. The power is gonna come from me. Work with me, stay connected to me, and this is where fruit is just gonna organically grow in your life. Because that's how fruit grows, right? It's, it, it doesn't try to force itself out. Have you ever heard a branch going like, Ugh! Oh, I got fruit. That's not it. And, and for a lot of my life, that's how I tried to grow fruit. God, I want to try to serve you. But I was doing it for God, working to his favor and, and trying to make him proud when God said, no, no, by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Just remain in me. And, and the more I, I focus on the remaining and just being a good branch and, and remaining in him, and keeping that connection right and, and going before God in prayer and, and not letting not, prayer not be just a morning thing, but, but, but that continual prayer in my life. This is where I saw a harvest of fruit because it was God's power flowing through my life. And this is what God's desire is for us. Woo! It's awesome, right? Sweet. Can we, can we finish up here? Second conclusion. There'll be one more. <laughs> Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So this is our expectation, right, as Christians? When, when we were baptized, we said, I, I'm dying to the old life and being raised to new life. And so the expectation for us as Christians is that we, our, our freedom, we don't have a, a puppy in a parking lot freedom. We, we crucify our, our passions and desires since we live by the Spirit. Let's keep in step with the Spirit. Let's not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So this is our calling. It's to walk by the Spirit uh, and remain in the Spirit and then keep in step with the Spirit. And that means move in line with the Spirit. And, and I think this is where remaining, a huge part of remaining is prayer. It's that prayerful connection with God. But then there's, there's also this, this obedience part to remaining. Where, you know, if I, if I have a GPS and, and I'm traveling around with it, the first thing I need to do is turn the GPS on. That's an important step. And then as the GPS says, turn right here, I turn. And I follow him and I keep in step with what he's calling me to do. And this is, this is a crucial part of remaining. Because remaining is not just... just just going for prayer, that is a huge part of it though. That is a huge part of it, right? But, but also remaining, it says in John 15 verse 10, if you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love. So part of remaining is, is just that, that prayerful and, and connection with God, taking him everywhere, and then it's following him and putting that into action in our life. And this is God's purpose for your freedom. It's to see you walk by the Spirit, to see you connect with the Spirit. It's not for you to fall back under the law where it's about your performance to be good enough for God and try to prove something to Him. It's about taking, taking our lives and giving them to God. Saying, God, I'm your slave. God, I, I want to serve other people. I want to bear fruit for you. 
And this is the purpose and plan that God has for your freedom. And as I was preparing, uh, you know, this, this message this, this week, I always try to ask myself questions too. And, and I just I ask myself, how's your fruit, Brenton? You know, how's your fruit? And I want to ask you that question too. How's your fruit? If, if you walked this morning on the, the orchid of your life, and you're, the trees are all there and you're tasting it, what does it taste like? Does it taste like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, or does it taste like things of, of the flesh? And this is where I was convicted and I said, God, I mean, I see some fruit for sure, but God, you want to bear much fruit through my life. You want to bear much fruit through my life. I, and I believe that's God's plan for us as well. And the beautiful thing is, hey, this, this is not when we become condemned. Because the Holy Spirit isn't saying, Brenton, you should have way more fruit. Try harder. Come on. He's saying, Brenton, give your life to me. Brenton, connect with me. Be led by me. Walk by the Spirit, and we will do this together. It will be my power flowing through you, and we can bear much fruit. Remain in me as I remain in you. And as, you, as I direct you and as I lead you, follow where I'm calling you to follow. Stay on the path of the freedom that I had for you. And, and man, the world's going to taste this fruit through your life. But it's going to be through his power working through you. Amen, church? Awesome. Let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. <laughs> God, I thank you for this amazing truth that you set us free. At this morning, if we put our faith in you, we've become temples of your Holy Spirit and your presence is inside of us and you won't leave us or forsake us. God, that's so, so, so amazing. And God, I just pray as, as, as a people here that we wouldn't try to make ourselves a, a law or make ourselves a, a point system to try to earn what you've already given us freely. Your grace. God, we let your grace transform our lives. We take the hand of the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. Let the Spirit teach us and renew our minds so we can just hold your hand and bear fruit together. Hmm. Just with every eye closed this morning, Maybe when I was talking about uh, freedom, how freedom is not an opportunity to indulge in the flesh, and you look at your life and, and that's kind of the freedom that you're experiencing. It's, it's puppy in a parking lot freedom where, where you're not really being led by him. You're not really on the path that, that you're, he's wanting you to walk on. And, and if that's you this morning and, and you want to say to God, God, I, I, I want your your plan for my freedom. I want what, what freedom really means to walk free from sin and to be a slave to you and to others and serve. I want that for my life. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I, I want to turn, I want to repent, and I, I, want that to, I want that freedom this morning. Yeah, thank you for your hands. Thank you for your hands. Yeah, amazing. Oh, amazing. Hmm. God, God, you see everyone's hands who are raised. And God, I just pray for a grace to fall on these people. God, thank you so much that since, if they've given their life to you, there's no condemnation. You just want to pull them out of the place they're in and set their feet on solid ground so they can serve you again. God, I pray that these people would experience freedom, true freedom in their lives through the power of the Holy Spirit working through them. And God, I pray for that all of us. God, we, there's more levels, there's new levels to all of our freedom, God. None of us can say today we are perfectly free and submitted to Christ. We're all on this journey. So Holy Spirit, I just pray every day that you'd help us to walk the, this walk. You'd help us 
through the Spirit to walk and not gratify the desires of the flesh and partner with you so that we can see fruit come through our lives. God, thank you that that's your desire to have fruit flowing freely and organically through my relationship with you. It's so awesome. God, I just pray that we'd steward this freedom that you'd give, you've given us and celebrate you. Amen? Awesome. Let's stand and worship.